When the world is broken down around you and you have no one to turn to, whether it be because there was an emergency and there's no one you can call, a societal collapse, a natural disaster, and things are broken down that you need fixed, who are you going to turn to? Now imagine a world where you can't go on Google and look up a repairman, when you can't go to a phone booth and look up a number to call, and dial up to get something fixed in your house that you need to survive. And for me, this is another important part of preparedness. It's knowing how to use tools and having tools you can use. So today, I'm going to be talking about the Prepper's Toolbox. And this is mine right here. Now this toolbox isn't that old, maybe 40 years or so. This toolbox was given from my great grandpa to my dad. And he used it for about 20 years at a local sugar factory where he was one of the warehouse managers. And now it's mine. I use it, it's in good shape, and it's full of my tools. So here it is, the inside to the Prepper's Toolbox. Now first off, let me start off by saying that this video is not intended to show off. It's not intended for me to compare my tool with yours and decide whose is bigger. This is about getting an idea rolling in your head, about creating a family toolbox that you can meet your needs with in the event that something breaks down. It's about preparedness in a general sense. Is this all my tools a lot of you are probably asking? And no, nowhere close. Most of my tools are in my shop or in specific toolboxes for specific jobs. And let me explain that. If I'm gonna go do some metal work and I know what I'm getting into, I'm going to go grab my metalworking toolbox. If I'm going to do some carpentry, I'll grab my carpentry toolbox. If I'm going to do gunsmithing, I'll grab my gunsmithing toolbox. If I'm stranded alongside the road, I will have tools appropriate in my truck to help get me back on the road. And if I'm out in the woods and I'm cutting down trees, you better believe I'll have the tools appropriate to the job with me in different toolboxes. Now this, like I was saying, is the prepper's toolbox. It's a general purpose toolbox to get you through most situations. Now I'm not gonna go over too much detail in each item. However, if you do wanna know more, I will gladly do a review or talk to you more about it. Just send me a message. So let's start talking about each individual item, why I have them and what I use them for. So first of all, you'll probably notice the duct tape at the top. This is no crappy duct tape. This is Gorilla brand heavy duty stuff that'll get you through most situations. Now duct tape isn't the end all be all, but it's a very handy tool to have to get you through a lot of little situations just like this toolbox. Let me set that aside here. Uh, next thing you'll need is a framing hammer of some sort. For general carpentry, this one's a DeWalt. It does have a nail starter on these new ones that are really great. It has kind of a, a rough edged end and this is for breaking things up or for general work and it does work great with nails or any type of carpentry and some metal work. So let me set that aside. So a framing hammer. Next thing you'll need is probably a sledgehammer. You don't need a big old monster. In fact, a lot of you will get tired out. But if you do have little things to break up and little things you need to move or do anything with, a little sledgehammer is great to have. Now this is Wilton brand. This is one of the best ones you can have. One little note on these Wilton sledgehammers. It is great to have one. And the reason is they kind of absorb the shock when you're hitting. And if you're going to do a lot of repetitive motion and slamming things down, it's amazing to have something with a little bit of cushion. And this is rubberized and it has like a bunch of little spring rods on the inside that you can't break. In fact, if you break one under normal use, that company will send you a thousand dollars. Just an interesting little fact. The Wilton brand sledgehammer is what I recommend. And I think everyone should probably have some form of one. I do recommend something, like I was saying, that is a composite or polymer or a rubberized handle for the pure reason that it will absorb shock better than wood. So next thing we have is a little putty knife for spreading or scraping. There's a lot of little uses for these. This one happens to be Snap-on brand. A linoleum knife. This is also new and very cheap. I think it paid around $5 for this. Snap-on brand, very sharp, SK-5 steel. Uh, just a good tool to have for general fixing of things and uh, spreading and little projects. We've got some screwdrivers here, several different types. Let me go over a few. 
One is a reversible. A lot of people will find these handy. This one's Crescent brand. It has two sizes, one and two, of a Phillips head or flathead, and it reverses on the inside here and there. Next type of screwdriver I have are these DeWalt's. Now these DeWalt's are great. I've got a number two size of each, and you'll see that little metal piece in there. That's so you can hit these with the back on the back with a hammer, and it won't break them. It'll just kind of transfer the shot through whatever you're hitting. Now it's not the most appropriate thing to have or use for a lot of jobs, but it does make it handy in a pinch. And that's what this is about, remember. Just getting yourself through little tasks and fixing little things until you can make them better or permanently. So next thing, Teflon tape. So many fittings that we use in life require Teflon. I've got a little pipe cutter for copper or a lot of other little pipes or whatever else. I have to use it all the time. In fact, I make a living using something like that every day. Almost, I don't know, probably 50 weeks out of the year I have to use one. A good Sharpie. I just like Sharpie brand. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just for marking. Whatever you like. Got some Flitz metal polish. I use this to keep rust off, to shine up items, just to make things last a little longer. Graphite lubricant. Great to have for keys, for freeing up locks, for cold weather. And right now, speaking of that, that's why I'm inside doing this video. It's 20 below outside, 50 below with wind chill. Not very fun. Okay, I got some drill bits here. This one is a cobalt bit. That's a 3 8 I have more in my shop. Some more screwdrivers. These are just angled, double-sided. And these are just general purpose tools that you don't need, but it's great to have when you're working in tight areas. I've got an assortment of different wrenches here. Now these wrenches are a gear wrench which I recommend having something similar. It doesn't have to be a gear wrench brand. But as you see, as you move, these help you get stuff done fast. Now a good ratchet set will definitely help more than that. Hey everybody, I forgot to put this in the video. I talked about a ratchet set you should have. And this doesn't fit in my toolbox, but it's a toolbox all by itself. And it's cheap, great quality, and what I call the prepper's tool when it comes to ratchets. You don't need a thousand dollar ratchet to get the job done. This is a 32-piece set, standard and metric, flow-through design, by Channel Lock Brand. I think I paid $20 for it at Sam's Club. And it's great quality. You can put whatever bit you want on here, or whatever ratchet, and, uh, you know, get it done. This is a Craftsman bottle wrench. Not required, I just think it's cool. It's for opening bottles. And that thing, you probably don't need, but it's in the toolbox anyway. I use it on occasion. I've got some assorted punches and chisels. This is a snap-on, I think, three-quarter inch chisel. And I've got more punches here, some more drill bits, and a few things like that. I'll see those in there. I've got a few files of different sizes. You want good files. Those ones are kind of general purpose, and they'll get you through, but not the best things to have. Uh, old snap-on ignition wrench. I find this size pretty handy. You can see how it is compared to my hand. Now I do have monster hands, but it's a really handy thing to get you through a lot of things. Any type of little wrenches or pliers are great. I've got a scraper here. Everyone should have one of these. Just a little razor blade scraper. They're awesome to have. Made in the USA. You can pick them up at any paint store. You should have one. Some more wrenches here, assorted different sizes. And I use these for all sorts of things, for small small nuts, small bolts, anything like that. And for general purpose, which I happen to grab most of the time, a little crescent wrench. You wouldn't believe how great this little thing comes in handy. And of course you can see the size compared to my hand again. I've got extra razor blades here and here. One has a dispenser. As far as utility knives, I think this is the best one on the market. This is a DeWalt one. It came with this DeWalt, and I use it all the time. And then it comes with this little blade, just distributor. It comes with 75 blades. It was like $9 at Lowe's. 
picked that up recently. Replaced my old crappy one. I've got some star bits, a knife sharpener, another sharpie, and a good file. A good French file. So underneath, let me just set this down here. A lot of things. A carabiner. This one is very heavy duty. You always want stuff rated in kilonewtons when you buy it. A carabiner of any type. Now this is rated for climbing technically, but I use it mostly for hosting or doing little jobs like that. Nothing heavy duty, even though it's rated pretty high. A good wire brush. This is a modern one. It has kind of a rubberized handle. Good steel bristles. A scraper end. Really nice to have. Cleans up your tools, cleans up messes. She threw. This is probably the best hacksaw I've ever found in my life. I love it. It's a DeWalt hacksaw. They're not too old. I think they came out a couple years ago. They hold blades in the handle. And man, when you grab this thing, it does have some heft to it. You can feel like you're not going to break it. Unlike those flimsy things you can buy. I think it's a great tool for everybody to have. Uh, you guys can probably see I'm a fan of DeWalt. DeWalt is great carpentry tools. Uh, I've got just a good 16 inch tape. This one just does down to an eighth. If you need to go any smaller, just mark halfway in between and you can do it down to sixteenths. But everyone should have good tape measure. And I have several. This one just happens to be in here. You probably don't need anything that has a 30 foot tape because you are probably not going to have to use it. But even a 10 or an 8 footer will probably get you through. More DeWalt stuff. I've got one here which is um, just regular Allen wrenches. I've got one here that's, I think, standard. And I've got one with Star. These are great. These are locking. These are fairly new on the market. But they do lock in place. You can't break anything. Several different sizes. A must for your toolboxes. It's so many different wrenches and tools, if you think about it, combined in these little bits. Great to have. I've got a wire stripper here. A good one to have. The original Irwin channel locks. I think channel locks are great. Everyone should have a pair. I've got several. You know they're not that expensive. I think you can pick one of these up for less than $5. And as far as heavy dutiness goes, great to have for your general purpose needs. A crescent wrench. A must for everyone's toolbox. Now there's more tools that are appropriate to the job most of the time, but none are as versatile as this. Set that aside. Sorry guys, I'm just getting over being sick. Grabbing a drink here. I've got a monkey wrench or pipe wrench. I use pipe wrenches all the time. I think there's no greater tool on earth than a pipe wrench, other than a knife. I get you through most things. This one's a snap-on brand, 14-incher. Um, not a very big one, but a good size for general tasks. Then most people, unless they're working on something specific, are probably not going to need anything bigger than that. So I'll set that aside here. I've got a new form of wrench that a lot of people probably haven't seen. This is like a little nut wrench, like crescent style for grabbing bolts or nuts or anything like that. You can see it moves, similar technology to a crescent wrench. The first time I saw one of these was last year. I picked one up, it's been in my toolbox ever since. You would not believe how handy this little thing is. Just as handy as any crescent wrench you've ever owned. I've got a, another little pipe wrench here. This is a little snap-on eight inch, I believe. Eight inch is a really handy size for a quarter inch or you know, little small things you might need, 3 8 pipe or something like that. A little rigid brand one, also 8 inch. All pipe wrenches, you should probably have more than one. You tend to be either tightening or loosening while holding the other one against. I've got a crescent wrench. <coughs> oh, excuse me, not crescent wrench. I've got a uh, channel lock. Excuse me. Got too many tools on my mind. But yeah, this is probably the most handy one you can get. The little bent. V jaws here. Great for pipe, great for general work. If I'm going to grab a channel lock, this will probably be the first one I grab. It is channel lock brand. And I know it says brands don't really matter, 
when it comes to pliers, just go with channel lock brand. They're not that expensive. They work the best. They're all USA made. And I've got tons of them. You guys probably haven't seen one of these before. Or maybe some of you old fogies have. It's just an old drill. You put your bits in here. Requires no electricity. Just good old man muscle. That's what it takes. I've got some needle nose pliers, channel lock brand again. I'm kind of getting into my channel lock part of the box. Some wire cutters. Some end nippers. Great for getting into stuff that's close to an object and getting it out of there just by shearing it. Got general pliers, two positions. Got a couple small channel locks here. Good for most tasks. Just like that other little snap-on ignition plier. Just a general purpose little channel lock. I mean, you can get it pretty big here. Over an inch. And that'll cover you. And I've got another size with cat hair on it. Of pliers, just a, a straight jaw. And then I got a larger size. And I have one more item, I believe. A pry bar. This is a little snap-on pry bar. It's great for you to have. It doesn't have to be snap-on. There's so many things you can use for a pry bar, but it's nice to have a dedicated one. And I really recommend it. And now you're probably thinking, holy cow, that was a lot of tools. And it is a lot of tools because I bought them over time, over years. Or replaced them with one thing or another. I didn't start off having all these tools. Now let me show you a few of these items I would grab. If I was just going to start off. First thing, Crescent Wrench. Crescent brand is the best. Next thing I would grab, General Channel Locks. Great to have. I would grab a pair of Vice Grips. Irwin brand preferably, because they work the best. I would grab a good Dual side screwdriver. Like I said, this has multiple bits. You can get these with different ones. I've got that side, this side. They're all double, double, double. So that's a few tools there. I would grab, let me find it here, a utility knife. And the last thing I would grab, besides the duct tape, because everyone can afford duct tape, is a framing hammer. If you have those tools, you'll be well on your way. I do recommend every other tool I showed you. And if you need to know anything else about any other of these, just let me know. I'll be glad to do the review. But remember, the prepper's toolbox, the mindset, having the stuff on hand to fix it yourself, because you may not always be able to call somebody. So rate, comment, subscribe, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me what I'm missing, what you guys would add, what you would take away. I'll talk to you guys later.